Hey guys, so today you're going to be doing the Stickleback Evolution Virtual Lab. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of things uh, so that you can go ahead and get started, started right away. Before we do get started though, a couple of reminders for your criteria for success today. So how do you earn a four today? So three things to focus on, that you are on task the entire time. This includes that you are not talking during Independence Station. And this includes that you are participating with your group discussion. So with your partner during the collaborative station, asking each other questions, sharing your thoughts, and agreeing or disagreeing respectfully. So when you get to the leader discussion questions, I really want to hear you guys discuss and talk about it and ask each other uh, whether or not you agree or disagree and the why. So I don't want to hear you just say, oh, yes, I agree with you. Be more specific. What exactly do you agree or disagree with? And then lastly, um, for a four, you also need to be able to write a clear and accurate claim based on relevant and appropriate evidence. So we're going to be focusing on finding appropriate evidence. And don't forget to make sure you use the rubric checklist that I create for you for this response. Also, you should know at all times what you are working on and the why. Why is it that we're working on this assignment? So the objectives to help you answer the why are we working on this are the following. So th this is the reason why we're doing, here's what we're doing and why we're doing it. There are four objectives for today. The first one is to analyze the pelvic structures of stickleback fish. Uh, that were collected from two different lakes and from that you're going to be able to determine if there are differences between those two lakes, um, between those two populations of fishes in the lakes. Then you're going to go ahead and use your data to draw a conclusion about what possible environmental factors are affecting this evolution of pelvic phenotype. So you'll notice that one population will probably have a pelvic structure, another population won't. Why is it that some of them do? Some of them don't. What environmental factors? From there, you're going to write a clear and accurate response based on your relevant and appropriate evidence. So like I mentioned, we're going to be focusing on making sure that you're able to extract relevant evidence from this tutorial, um, from the video, from the virtual lab, and the readings that you're going to be doing in the dependence station. And lastly, making sure that you're initiating group conversations with your partner. So by asking each other questions, sharing your thoughts, and respectfully agreeing or disagreeing with one another. Okay, so I'm going to skip the do now for now. We'll go over that in the collaborative station. Um, I'm going to scroll down to part one, tutorial one. So in your packet, you're going to see this part right here. Oops, let me go ahead and delete this so I can show you how to fill this out. Um, but basically, when you click on the link for the lab, it's going to go ahead and take you to a page that looks like this. Um, you're going to go ahead and, like it says here, click to enter the lab. And then it's going to say, welcome back. I've already done this many times. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start over so that I can start over, click on OK. All right. So now it says again to click to enter the lab. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start tutorial one. And it says to click on the tray of the fish to begin. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the fish. So the manager is the only one that's going to be manipulating the computer. and um, we only have one laptop for a partnership. Okay, so the first part is scoring a, whether or not a fish, the stickleback fish, has a pelvis. So looking at this example, you have two options. You can look at the lateral view and the ventral view. If I click on the lateral view and then I go ahead and scroll over the fish, you can see a magnified version. And what you're looking for is, here's an example. Um, so you're looking for that red-ish structure right underneath the fin if you're looking at the lateral view. If you're looking at the ventral view, you're going to be looking for this heart-shaped red structure uh, to help you locate that pelvic structure. So looking at this, I can kind of see that reddish structure right there, but just to be sure, I want to click on the ventral view. Aha, there it is, that heart-shaped red structure. So in this example, this fish has a complete pelvic structure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the complete option. On your handout, please make sure you're filling it out. So you're either going to write in a C for complete, R for reduced, or A for absent. My sample fish number one was a complete, so I'm going to write a C. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Here's another example. Oh, I can see that it does have those red spots, but if I look at both views, it's not as profound as the first example. So it's still there, um, but it's not complete, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Reduced. 
correct. So I'm going to go ahead and go to sample fish number two and write an R for reduced. I'm going to go to the next one. In this example, I can still see those red um, sort of heart-shaped structures for the pelvic structure, but it's not fully there. And if I click on the lateral view, yeah, it's not as deep. The color, you can see that it's not as deep. So I'm going to go ahead and click on reduced again. And then that was my sample fish number three, so I'm going to write R again. And then keep going until you finish all 20 fish samples. In this one, I can see that there is absolutely no pelvic structure on the ventral view. And if I go to the lateral view, there's absolutely no ret there. So in this example, um, the pelvic structure is absent. So I'm going to click on absent. And I'm going to fill that in with an A. So you're going to keep doing this all the way until you finish 20 fish samples. And once you um, complete all 20, you're going to get a score. Make sure you write your score here. This is super important. If you get below a 15 out of 20, go ahead and start the tutorial one again until you get the hang of scoring the stickleback fish. Um, if you do get at least a 15 out of 20 or above, then you are ready to go to experiment one. So well, if you complete and get 15 out of 20, then you're going to go ahead and go to experiment one. So at the bottom, you're going to see the link for experiment one, and it's going to take you to this screen. Then from here, you're going to go ahead and um, also please leader, don't forget you do have a leader discussion question right here. And um, after both you and your partner can both explain your, the response to this question, make sure you raise your hand so that I can come on over and select a random reporter. So no matter who I call on, you should be able to provide an answer. So leader, it's very important that you make sure that your partner, both of you, know what to say. And then I'll check you off. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start here. So experiment one, part one, it's staining the fish, but you won't have time to do that today. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the blue gloves to get started, but then you're going to click on the skip part one staining. We're not going to do that today. So click on skip part one staining. And in case you forget, I also provided you those directions on your packet right here. So then you're going to go directly to experiment one, part two. In this example, you're going to go ahead and click on the jar of stained uh, fish labeled Bear Paw Lake. So go ahead and click on that jar. And when you click on that jar, you're going to do the exact same thing that you just practiced. But um, you're going to go ahead and score the stickleback fish that were found and collected from Big Pear Lake. So you're going to go ahead and it says to click on the strainer. So I'm going to click on the strainer. And it's going to prepare the fish for you. <coughs> and then um, click the jar. And then manager, make sure you're reading the instructions at the bottom and following along. Um, so now I'm going to click on the label to continue. These fish are coming from Bear Pot Lake. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the fish. And it's going to move over to the microscope. And again, you're going to do the exact same thing. So looking at the lateral and then looking at the ventral fish, again, you're looking for that pelvic structure. So I, in this example, I see it kind of, but it's, in my opinion, reduced. So I would go ahead and click on reduced and then make sure that you are filling out your data table here. So in this case, I would write reduced. Then you're going to go ahead and click on the fish so it moves it over to the other tray. Now click on another fish. And now here's your example two. Here I can also see that in this case, looking at the lateral and the ventral views, the pelvic structures do seem to be absent. I'm sorry, not absent, reduced. They're there, but not complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on reduce. And then I'm gonna write that down in my data table. So you're gonna keep doing that for all 20 fishes in the Bear Pot Lake, all the way until you get done with them. Then you're going to do the same thing. It'll take you to the next step. You're going to do the same thing with the frog lake stickleback fish. So when you get there, you'll do the same thing. Score them. Write your answers here. And then you're going to be able to count it up. So looking at the bear paw lake, you're going to count how many of the fishies had complete pelvic structure. So that's going to be from your data table here. Count them up. So count up how many 
complete, reduced, and absent, and then write your totals in here. And then do the same thing for the frog lake. You're going to count how many uh, complete, reduced, or absent. And then from there, my leader, this is uh, very important. This is where you, your, your discussion points are going to come in. You need to make sure that you are discussing with your partner the following questions once you've collected your data. So make sure you read the question and engage in conversation with your partner and ask each other, uh, once you respond, make sure you ask each other to explain why you disagree or why you agree, um, not just giving basic answers. Make sure you engage in that discussion. And then as soon as you feel comfortable uh, that both partners are able to explain, no matter who I call on, then you're going to go ahead and raise your hand, my leader, and I'll go ahead and ask you a question from these discussion questions, and then I'll sign you off. And then lastly, you'll move on to your bar graph. So in your bar graph, you're going to use the bar graph paper that I created for you, that template, and then you're going to go ahead and plot this data here. Um, and then from there, we're going to move on to finding evidence. So the main question that we're focusing on today is determining if the phenotypes are different between the bear paw lake and the frog lake fishes, the stickleback fishes. And if so, which of those two populations is the most similar to marine and sea run stickleback fish? So just giving you a heads up, looking at the background information at the very beginning, you're going to read a little bit more about uh, marine and stickle, uh, sea run stickleback fish. So in this background, you'll know that um, marine and sea run stickleback fish all have a full pelvic girdle and pelvic spine. So they do have a full pelvic structure. So then you have to determine uh, which population is most closely related to that marine stickleback fish population the fishes from the bear paw lake or the fishes from the frog lake stickleback fish. So look at their pelvic structure phenotype, which one is most uh, related or more similar to that of the marine. And then lastly, here is the rubric for um, how we'll be grading your responses today. Again, we're focusing on the selection of evidence. Uh, so we'll go over the difference between a three and a four and um, you'll have time to write your response, you'll evaluate your response, then we'll give each other feedback, and then you'll go ahead and write your revised um, response. And then please, pretty please, don't forget that there is your uh, response checklist at the end. Use this checklist to help you write your best response here um, when I give you the time to go ahead and write it, and then we'll use that to give each other feedback, okay? All right, so go ahead and make sure you continue on the independent station task. You're going to watch a couple of videos and a reading, and those are other sources that you will be able to extract evidence from to help you answer and support your answer during the analysis response part. All right, good luck, guys.